You still had that with deforestation. You still had that at the point in which you um, diverted Murray Darling for the production of vegetables and agricultural goods for consumption. This still exists under their model. But if we look at the, the so-called harms to humans in my second point of rebuttal, and then they put forward, you know, we're over-consuming meat. It's bad for us. We're eating too much. We have no issue with us saying, as put forward in my POI, of us saying, you know, eating a little less meat. Say, oh, no, one less steak a day. And on the status quo, we already have Australians occasionally having, you know, a steak free night. Great. But this should not in any way encroach on our individual right to eat what we want and to live how we want in this democratic country. And we think it is inherently discriminatory to put this burden on humans to not eat meat when under the status quo in the wild, if you look at any omnivore that exists in any other species, they eat each other. And the point at which you put any other omnivore species, like a monkey, for example, with the choice between eating plants or eating, I don't know, some sort of mouse or animal, they're always going to choose the animal. So it seems inherently ironic to be putting a tougher standard on us as people. But secondly, we don't owe this duty of care. Why? Because this brings me to three points of substantive. What happens if you put their model in? Firstly, it has very harsh economic ramifications. At the point at which two-thirds of our meat industry is reliant on things like exports, at the point at which all of Australian culture and the ability for families to even feed themselves under the status quo is dependent on cheap food and meat. This creates inherent harm to society. Under the bad model, yes? <laughs> okay, so if we recognise that, like, Industries die all the time, right? People have to reskill. So if we got rid of the farming industry, uh, so, sorry, if we got rid of the meat industry, those people would have to be like moving into a different industry. How is that any different to any other industry? Well, firstly, one is that you're actually cutting off a large point of GDP. Two, it's more environmentally harmful because you're still going to have the large coal and carbon emissions from building these um, farms, and also through through diverting water resources. But three. It's even more harmful than the animals that you're seeking to defend. Oh, Why? Point. When Australia banned live exports, those live exports, because they were not deemed fit to consume Australia, were murdered and buried under the ground. All that meat and all those animals, as a result of that policy, were culled. And this is what's going to essentially happen under your status quo. You have not given us a model to incentivize 95% of the Australian population to get rid of 50,000 years of evolution and natural inclination in eating habits. And you also have not given us a model why farmers in any way or magically setting up new industries would also be incentivized to keep all these hundreds of thousands of animals that are suddenly no longer relevant to society under your model because there's no production value. Things like cows, things like pigs. Therefore, your model is inherently contradictory in, as it does not address the substantive issues we are facing. We have no issue on this side of the house with things like better regulation. And it's been put forward in a large plethora of the scientific journals with things like free range farming, with things like the Jamie Oliver campaign on television, which was put forward to society, let's buy free range eggs, at the point at which we have a legal system itself which recognizes the importance of farm animals, in which legal protections and animal advocacy groups are actually acting to make better um, living sense for animals. We feel the issue is not essentially should we stop eating meat, but how we eat meat. To us on this side of the house, this is the issue and the status quo, we are addressing this. And this is why we are very proud to oppose this ridiculous and contradictory motion. Long live meat. I would like to thank Paris for his speech and call upon the last speaker for the affirmative team, no other than April Broadbent in her carriage suit. Come up to the stage, April.
um, company that had millions of dollars behind it and can hire the best lawyers. Like, they, that will always be a losing battle. So you can't, like, have um, animal advocacy, advocacy groups never be able to um, be the match of corporate bodies. We'll see that they'll always be trying to um, improve regulation. But as we've already seen recently, industry bodies have been so far proving successful in changing the regulations for fat, uh, free range chickens so that they are allowed to keep the chickens in a smaller space. So as we've seen, like, the industry um, legislation is actually going backwards because businesses are far more powerful than animal advocacy groups. And that is why it is up to the consumers to make that choice. So onto this topic um, issue of the legal system, right? Under the legal system, animals are in this weird place where they're both property, but we also have, like, some obligations to look after them. Now, the problem with this is that, firstly, like, the, um, the priority in this legislation is always given to the um, businesses because in terms of the government, like the businesses always come first before the animals because the animals need this property because we're deemed as a thing that we can use like for a commodity. So under the legal system, we do not protect animals in the same way that we protect like other vulnerable uh, people. We see that the law will never be able to do this for the reason we've already explained that like businesses are always more powerful. Right. So moving quite quickly on. Um, now onto this sob story about like meat and society. So firstly what we heard was this idea that oh like you know when we banned live exports that was bad for farmers and things like that. Now the problem is that, um, and we heard this idea, you know, like these animals will be overrunning the earth. We'll see like farmers, you know, going out of business and they won't be able to feed their families. Now firstly, to, um, firstly we don't think this is the case because we think that like when everyone goes vegetarian, we think that uh, um, understandably there'll be a fading out transition. So like the practicality of that will be dealt with, we'll just stop producing meat. And people that live on farming communities generally like multitask and do a few different activities. So they'll be able to do like different farming sort of things. And secondly, I think we don't, just don't care. Like at the point where like we are hurting and um, torturing billions of animals every year, when we're degrading the environment to the point where like the animal agriculture industry is causing more of our environmental damage than all forms of transport in the world combined, we think that all of those harms greatly outweigh the livelihood of a few farmers that are abusing animals. We can find other things to do. We can retrain them. We like happy to throw like things like that at them um, to be able to deal with that issue. So we think that that is a fringe issue in this debate. So what have I told you? I've told you that the only way to help the environment and stop cruelty is for consumers to stand up and make a choice and like tell big businesses that this is not what we'll stand. I've told you that like the um, that regulation will not work and it's consumer power that um, that causes effect and change. And I've told you that. All this idea that you know it'll harm society, the fringe, um, like getting rid of meat, is a fringe issue when we see like far greater harm that way. We are very proud to propose. I would like to thank the carrot for his speech and call upon the last speaker of the debate, representing the Griffin Organised Debate Society, Dom.
lot of this, only 3% actually follow a strictly vegetarian diet. We probably recognise that Australians that like their meat, no thank you. People have a right to pursue their own happiness. We are quite happy to stand for that and we don't think that the government should force you to give up meat just because they think it is bad for you. I'll be getting to that very shortly. Realistically speaking, People can choose to opt into eating meat or eating meat, like being strictly vegetarian. The fact they don't demonstrates that people do not want to be vegetarian. The fact that they don't means that in a system where they have that choice, they are choosing not to enter into that lifestyle. You are probably going to piss off a lot of people by forcing them into that lifestyle because it is a lifestyle choice. That is what is important. I'll take you on that. We're not saying we're going to force everyone to be vegetarian. We're saying that there is like a moral and practical imperative for people to become vegetarian. Will you engage with that? Awesome. About to engage with that in several different points. So, when we're dealing with the idea that it is better for a person to be vegetarian, what we say is that James in particular told you that there are a lot of health risks associated with meat. How it increases the risk of cancer. How you increase the risk of things like food poisoning. Ladies and gentlemen, there are to anything you eat. You can buy an apple from a supermarket and find that it is half rotten inside. We don't think that this is necessarily different when we're dealing with things like meat. What we say is that like, if you want to talk about promoting health risks to eating meat, we're quite happy to do that. At the stage in which people know that cancer, like that smoking leads to cancer and that, that is harmful for them and choose to do it anyway. We don't think that people like will choose to do this knowing that they actually like meat. We're quite happy to stand for that choice on our side of the house to take you now. Let's assume for a second that people don't actually think through their choices, right? Because like they're not thinking when they're eating meat, oh, this is going to potentially give me like greater cancer, therefore I shouldn't do it. Isn't it the role of the government to protect people from the long-term decisions that they can never make? No, because when the government like recognises that smoking in particular is directly linked to cancer, and they still allow you to make that choice by purely promoting like that it is harmful for you. We think that there are better ways of promoting that it is harmful for you than taking away that choice altogether. We recognise that we like choice under our side of the house. So, looking secondly at the impact on animals. Firstly, this idea, are animals subservient? Because this was something that was highly contentious on both sides. We told you that yes, we do believe that we can make choices in regards to animals. We don't think we have a duty of care. We think that animals are subservient. Like the nature of the food chain is that evilly, like the nature of the food chain is that everything is eaten by something else. Humans happen to be at the top of that food chain because they are the most sentient beings. Like we're quite happy to stand for that. What we say is that even if we say that we are not morally superior, the reason animals will always be seen as inferior is because humans will always do what is best for humanity. When given a choice between like being forced into a lifestyle, like if, if they are actually, like realistically speaking for a moment, like what we say is that when we saw like people getting attacked by sharks and suddenly they're being an outcry to kill all the sharks. Like, people do not care about other species as long as it benefits their own species. We think that animals will always be seen as inferior in that light. We also heard about, like, the harms to animals. Because they told us, like, this... They gave us pretty much, like, this massive list of all these harms to animals under the status quo of eating meat. What we say is, like, we're happy to regulate. What we say is, like, we're happy to change this. We told you from the beginning that there are all ways, better ways, of dealing with the meat industry. What we think is that under your model, taking this industry away leads to more harm to the animals under that industry, and we're getting to exactly that in a moment. But secondly, what we also say, so you don't necessarily prevent people eating meat, because there are always going to be people who are quite willing to go out there and have, like get their own meat through other means. They're not going to be following the regulated systems already in place. That's probably going to be more harmful, because you can have, have like, a lot of animals be killed and not necessarily be made. And thirdly, looking at how this impacts the environment and the economy. Firstly, looking at the economy. So, what we say is that firstly, you can have industries like crashing because they're forced to find other ways we don't even necessarily the things that we get into in a moment. What we say is that for families in particular who already have low incomes, it is much more affordable for them to buy meat which will sustain. 
stay in the normal meal for days. So thank you. It is better for those families because it is more expensive for them to access vegetables. Vegetables are like our seasonal thing anyway. What we say is that it is better for those families to actually buy meat. Like something that will sustain them because that's what they will always do it. What we say is that when you take away the industry, as we saw with live exports, what will happen to the animals like actually tied to these industries anyway? Like what we're going to have is a lot of animals struggling with no place to go because you don't incentivize farmers to keep these animals in these farms if they do not have the purpose of actually selling them at the end of it. You're either going to have a lot of farmers either culling animals that they don't have any use for and that means not going to go anywhere. Or you're going to have a lot of farmers releasing these animals into the wild where they will not survive anyway because as we said, other animals eat meat and choose not to be vegetarian themselves. Massive harm to animals within those industries because either way they are probably going to die. Like that is a direct harm that comes from their model and they never engage with that. What we say we're seeing the environment is Paris told you we were quite happy to find other alternatives to feed animals. We told you that we were happy to look at like the USA with some options for like ethanol and soybeans. That's a direct like um, result of agriculture. We're quite happy to look at that. You never told why getting rid of the industry is better than finding alternatives. So because we lack our meat and because we will probably go and get meat after this debate anyway, we're quite happy to choose not to be vegetarian. Thank you. I'd like to thank Dom for her speech and indeed for closing the debate. I would also like to thank Campus Life for helping us putting this debate on. Have a great